you know, there are American heroes who don't like this idea. Neil Armstrong, Gene Cernan have both testified against commercial space flight and the way that you're developing it. And Tesla, of course, out with the big earnings win after the bell, and that is sending those shares higher. The company beating on both revenue and earnings, and perhaps the biggest win was the record profit that reported $3.3 billion for the quarter. But when so, critics say you can't do this, your answer to them is, we've done it. Tesla founder Elon Musk says he sold the last of 20,000 flamethrowers to raise millions for his tunneling business. Frustrated commuters across the country may welcome tech titan Elon Musk's latest big disruptive idea. How about this? Underground tunnels to beat traffic congestion. Last night in Los Angeles, he unveiled the first tunnel in what he hopes will become a network of underground highways, he says. How, what, what drives you on a day-to-day -day basis to do what you do? I guess, the, like, I, I, I really want to make sure that there is a good future for humanity um, and that we're on a path to understanding the nature of the universe. Elon Reeve Musk was born June 28, 1971, in Pretoria, South Africa, the first of three children to be born to Errol and May Musk. His father Errol was an electromechanical engineer, a pilot, consultant, property developer, and even a former half-owner of a Zambian emerald mine. His mother May was a well-known model and dietitian, a quote star in her own right according to the New York Post. Elon was the eldest of three. His younger brother Kimball was born in 1972, and a younger sister Tosca was born in 1974. On the outside, it appeared to be one big happy family, a successful engineer, a model wife, and three bright children. What the world wasn't privy to, however, was the physical and mental abuse the family was suffering behind the scenes. As it turns out, Elon's father, Errol, was very abusive. Very violent. It was not a happy childhood. My father has serious issues. Errol would also handicap Elon with his refusal to allow him to pursue his early childhood interests. He was unwilling to accept the integration of computers not only into his own household, but the world as a whole. He's somewhat of a Luddite, actually, um, in, in many respects, particularly computers. Uh, he didn't want to buy a computer and refused to use computers and said they would never amount to anything. Um, so I actually had to buy a computer with saved up, you know, saved up my allowance, and, um, and he, then he did contribute a bit after I saved up my allowance. But, he initially refused to buy a computer for me. In 1981, at the age of 10 years old, Elon purchased his first computer for around $300, a Commodore VIC-20 that released that very year. Commodore VIC-20. Move over. A Commodore VIC-20 does more than your machines. It's a great computer that also plays great games, like this. Unbeknownst to young Elon at the time, this single move would begin his lifelong journey to revolutionize humanity and the way we see it. His love for video games and the technology that ran them quickly grew into a realization that he could build his own games and create his own software. As a matter of fact, Elon already had his first lead. As a child, he would read PC Magazine, a publication that would purchase and then subsequently publish works from individuals that revolved around computer repair, programming, and software. And at the age of 12, Elon sold his first program, an HTML5 game known as Blastar. Using only a manual and his own ambition, he created and sold this program for $500 to that very magazine. You know, when I was a kid, I, I didn't really have any grand designs. I mean, the, the reason I started com programming computers was because I like computer games. Um, and I play lots of computer games, and um, I, I learned that if I wrote software and sold it, then I could get more money and buy better computers. Elon was certainly paving his own way, but there were still many issues that he faced. Having started school one year early, Elon was often the youngest kid in his grade. Throughout schooling, he was known to be bullied regularly, and due to this, was a very introverted child, 
once even being hospitalized after a group of boys threw him down a flight of stairs. I mean, I hated going to school when I was a kid. It was torture. <laughs> He would go on to graduate from Pretoria Boys High School and briefly attend the University of Pretoria for five months. This five month period would allow Elon to avoid the mandatory South African military service. With great aspirations to venture overseas, Elon knew it would be easier to enter the United States via Canada due to the ease of access to a Canadian passport through his Canadian born mother, May. In 1989, Elon arrived in Canada, living with his second cousin in Saskatchewan and working manual labor jobs in a farm and lumber mill for approximately one year. In 1990, he would enter the Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario, and remain in study until transferring to the University of Pennsylvania two years later, where he would graduate in 1995 with a Bachelor of Arts in Physics and a Bachelor of Science in Economics. During the summer of his last year at the university, Elon held two internships in Silicon Valley, an energy storage startup, Pinnacle Research Institute, and a Palo Alto startup known as Rocket Science Games. In 1995, the same year he graduated, he was also accepted by Stanford University in California to a Doctor of Philosophy program in Materials Science. However, after two days at Stanford, he dropped out, instead seeking a job at Netscape, an independent computer services company out of Mountain View, California. He was denied. Some say dropping out of a PhD program at Stanford and then being rejected from employment would be quite a road bump. However, for Elon, this would only fuel his drive, leading him to join the tech boom and launch an internet startup company of his own. And at first I tried to get a job at Netscape because that was the only internet company uh -huh. um, and they didn't respond to me. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, okay, um, if I can't get a job at the only internet company, then I better try starting something. With only $2,000 to his name and $100,000 of university debt, Elon had a decision to make. His new startup dream needed an office, but he needed a place to live. With office space being less expensive than an apartment, he opted to rent a small office and simply sleep on the couch, showering in a nearby YMCA facility. The wealth his family thrived on as a child was of no assistance to him now. In 1995, Elon, with the help of his brother Kimball and a Lebanese-Canadian investor Greg Khoury, launched his startup company Zip2 a website that aimed to bring print media into the digital age, allowing the newspaper industry to create a city guide on the World Wide Web containing maps, directions, and even a yellow pages. This startup was founded in a small office by three young men and a single shared computer, with business decisions, or disagreements rather, being actually resolved through wrestling matches between Elon and his brother. When my brother and I were starting our first company, uh, in, instead of getting an apartment, we just rented a, a small office and we slept on the couch. Uh, and we, we showered at the, the YMCA and uh, we're, we're so hot up we had just one computer. So the, 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 the website was up during the day uh, and I was coding at night. The brothers, with their investor, eventually signed contracts with two of the biggest media outlets, the New York Times and the Chicago Tribune with Elon stating, quote, the website was up during the day and I was coding it at night, seven days a week, all of the time, end quote. Four years later, in February of 1999, Zip2 would become what all tech startup companies dreamed of, acquired by a larger company. For $307 million in cash, Compaq bought out Zip2. Elon personally profited $22 million for his 7% share of the company. $2,000 to $22 million in four years, and a substantial distance from selling a $500 HTML5 program in 1983. This allowed the 28-year-old to not only breathe a huge sigh of freedom, but he was also able to splurge a bit on some new toys, spending $1 million on a McLaren F1 approximately eight months after the sale of Zip2. It's called McLaren F1. It's a million dollars for a car. 
It's it's uh it's decadent. There are 62 McLarens in the world, and I will own one of them. Elon, however, was far from reaching his peak. He had his eyes set on a new prize, and with it, a new project. He saw an opportunity in synergy between his programming capabilities, his newfound business knowledge, and the world's banking sector. In 1999, Elon would co-found X.com with the former CEO of Intuit, Bill Harris. With this company, Elon would also obtain the dream of being a CEO, as he was the largest shareholder of this new company. I, after selling Zip2, I, wa I, I wanted to do something more on the internet, and it seemed to me that there hadn't been all that much innovation in the financial sector. Um, and given that money is kind of a, just an entry in a database, and it was low bandwidth, it was, so it wouldn't, didn't require some big infrastructural upgrade to the internet, uh, it seemed it should lend itself to innovation. Officially launched on December 7th, X.com aimed to be a financial services and email payment company, allowing users to send money directly through email. The catch was that the receiving party would also have to sign up to this free service, a word-of-mouth marketing tool that caused massive ripples. At the end of year two, X.com would retain a membership of over a million customers, a massive achievement in the early adoption stages of the internet, when many individuals were highly wary of, quote, online activities, especially those revolving around their hard-earned money. There was a little feature that just seemed like an obvious feature, which was the ability to transfer money from one uh, person to another by, by entering a unique identifier, like an uh, email address. Um, that was like just a sort of a little feature, but then whenever we demonstrate the product, um, people would, wouldn't get excited about the consolidated financial services, but they would get excited about emailing money. In March of 2000, X.com signed a merger with Confinity, its largest competitor at the time. Confinity was a company that enabled Palm Pilot users to send money to each other through their product called PayPal. Elon would enter this new merger, retaining his powerful position of CEO, but his preference for Microsoft software over Linux would eventually result in the resignation of Confinity's co-founder, Peter Thiel. I have more tolerance for risk than Peter does, uh, so I, I was sort of maybe more kind of pedal to the metal and Peter was like, well, let's, a little, let's be a little cautious here. Uh, he may have been right, actually. So. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until September that very same year that Elon and Justine decided on a two week long honeymoon in Australia, during which the X.com board actually voted to remove Elon as the company's CEO and appoint Peter Thiel to the position, a move that reportedly happened due to technological issues within the company and a supposed lack of a cohesive business model. You know, um... Peter and Max and David and the other guys, not, I mean, they're smart people um, with generally the right motivations. They did what they thought was, was right, and I think for the right reasons, I mean, except that the reasons weren't valid, um, <laughs> in my opinion, but. Under the new leadership of Teal, X.com was rebranded as PayPal in 2001 and focused primarily on this new payment processing service that at the time had already been more popular than the services offered by X.com. Elon still remained the largest shareholder of PayPal in 2001 with 11.7% of all company shares falling under his ownership. So when eBay acquired PayPal for $1.5 billion in 2002, Elon profited over $175 million in cold hard cash had started as childhood achievements, had created one of the youngest, wealthiest individuals in Silicon Valley. This newly found wealth allowed Elon to further his involvement in the Mars society and interplanetary ventures. Elon even went as far as to travel to Russia in hopes of acquiring intercontinental ballistic missiles to launch greenhouse payloads into space. He was, however, deemed a novice by the Russians and was even spit on by a chief designer. With a strong desire to obtain an affordable solution to his rocketry needs, Elon did what Elon does best, he founded another company. Using $100 million of his fortune, he founded the Space Exploration Technologies Corp, otherwise known as SpaceX, in May of 2002. 
a company that to this day he remains the CEO and chief engineer of. While building SpaceX, Elon's aspirations were only growing further. From his early internship at the Pinnacle Research Institute in 1995, he had become very aware of the possibility of fully electric transportation, and in 2002, the world was becoming very aware of global warming. In July of 2003, the company Tesla Motors was incorporated by Martin Eberhard and Mark Tarpening. These two men were responsible for the early funding received by Tesla Motors, now Tesla Inc., until the Series A round of funding and played a pivotal role in the company's early development. This, okay. this is one of the things that I found kind of kind of uh, fascinating about him is that you know he's actually accomplished some amazing things he's, in is, his own he, right. I think. He's, he's totally amazing. Yeah, SpaceX is amazing, and you know he's done some interesting things with Tesla for sure. I'm not sure why he has to also say that he was a founder when he wasn't. I don't understand that. Oh, well, yeah, whatever. The first round of funding for Tesla Motors left Elon once again as the majority shareholder of a company with a $6.5 million cash injection. He also opted to join Tesla's board of directors as a chairman. It wasn't until 2008 that Elon would assume leadership of the company as a series of conflicts in 2007 paired with the financial implosion of 2008 left Eberhard ousted from the company. In this time, Elon would become the CEO of Tesla as well as the product architect. And as a side note, as of 2019, this made Elon Musk the longest tenured CEO of any automotive manufacturer in the world. In that same year, Tesla would launch the Roadster, the first production of an all-electric car using lithium-ion battery cells. Contrary to the popularity of the Tesla we know and love today, the initial launch of the Roadster yielded only approximately 2,500 sales, a far stretch from the production demand we see today. In 2008, Tesla also announced its production of the Tesla Model S, originally named Project White Star. While this announcement was made in June of 2008, the prototype for the Model S would not be displayed until over a year later on March 26th of 2009, with the exclusive premiere being shown at Tesla's Menlo Park location on April 8th. It is now time! It is the moment we've been waiting for for a long time, and it is time to deliver Model S. It wasn't until June 22nd of 2012 that the first 10 customers would receive their new Tesla Model S at the Tesla Fremont factory during the official public launch, with initial production pumping out 15 to 20 new cars each week. This would grow substantially to 1,000 cars per week by 2015. This all-new electric vehicle would go on to be named one of Time Magazine's top 24 inventions of 2012, the 2013 World Green Car of the Year, Motor Trend's 2013 Car of the Year, and Automobile Magazine's 2013 Car of the Year as well. And in 2015, the Tesla Model S would be named Car and Driver's Car of the Century. In the middle of Tesla's 2010 production ramp, Elon and his first wife Justine would divorce. However, Elon wouldn't remain single for long as the multi-millionaire CEO would meet and within 10 days propose to his second wife, actress Tallulah Riley, until they also divorced four years later in 2014. The separation of Elon and Tallulah would resolve only for them to remarry in 2015 for a brief amount of time, and once again they would get divorced in 2016. Between 2015 and 2017, while Tesla continued production and immense growth, Elon began two new ventures on the side, Neuralink and The Boring Company. In 2016, Elon would co-found a neurotechnology company called Neuralink with the intention of integrating the human brain with artificial intelligence, a company that would produce an embedded device in the human brain to spawn the creation of a human-machine world. 
the creation of a brain that could better retain memory and eventually cure ailments such as blindness, paralysis, Alzheimer's, and more. This venture has been called highly speculative by the MIT Technology Review, and since a live display in 2020, the world has not seen much from Neuralink, not to say that groundbreaking research isn't happening behind closed doors. In that same year, Elon also founded The Boring Company to begin construction of tunnels under some of America's busiest cities, completing a massive tunnel underneath the Las Vegas Convention Center in 2021 while also producing a scarce run of novelty flamethrowers, a concept he became fascinated with while watching the documentary Return to Space. In 2017, Elon's focus would return to Tesla. This is the year Tesla would launch the Model 3, and in early 2020, it would become the world's best-selling electric car, surpassing half of a million units sold. Tesla entered the S&P 500 in late 2020, having become the most valuable car maker earlier that year, a long ways from its initial offering in 2010, and by October of 2021, Tesla had reached a market capitalization of $1 trillion, only the sixth company to do so in US history. The all-electric road had not been without its speed bumps for Elon, though, as he was sued by the SEC in September of 2018 due to a tweet he made about having secured the funding needed to take Tesla private. The lawsuit exclaimed that Elon had held talks with foreign investors in July of 2018 that entirely negated the claims made in his tweet, and attempted to bar him from ever retaining a CEO position in a public traded company. Without disclosing any information on the matter, Elon settled his case with the SEC in a matter of days, and both he personally alongside Tesla as a company were fined $20 million. On top of this monetary penalty, Elon would be forced to give up his chairman position in Tesla for three years. He was, however, allowed to remain as the CEO. As of 2022, Elon Musk has a net worth of approximately $264 billion, with around 20% of his fortune being loaded in and aimed at a total buyout of the social media empire that is Twitter. He is currently married to, yet separated from, the musician known as Grimes, and is the father to seven healthy and bright-eyed kids. While money has certainly allowed Elon to become a mogul of internet memes and trolling culture, it certainly has never changed his work ethic. From sleeping on a couch in a small office with a negative net worth due to debt, to becoming the wealthiest human to ever walk the earth, Elon has continued to relentlessly pursue the furthering of mankind and push the limits of what we believe is possible in the world of technology. I truly believe I can speak for us all when I say we're all on the edge of our seat, waiting to see what he does next and to what reaches he can expand the human race. I guess, the, like, I, I, I really want to make sure that there is a good future for humanity um, and that we're on a path to understanding the nature of the universe.